What's up guys, Patrick here from Totser Gaming, and today I'm coming at y'all with a Domain Monarch deck profile. Uh, Domain Monarchs have been around for a long time, uh, but they recently got cards out of Light and Overdrive that allow them to be played in the current format at a better state than they were previously. Um, and I've enjoyed this deck quite a bit. Um, I've been playing it every once in a while at Locals and doing alright with it. I mean, I don't expect to win with it, but you know, I'm not getting handedly corked, and that's kind of what matters when you decide to play a Tier 2 deck. Or honestly, I wouldn't even put this tier two, maybe tier three. Um, probably just in the rogue category, honestly. But it's still a very fun deck, and it's a very interesting deck that uh, I think, with the right hands, can be uh, super oppressive for your opponent to deal with. Uh, so with the intros out of the way, let's go ahead and get on into this main deck. Uh, starting off, we have Triple Aether. Uh, Aether is probably the best monarch in the deck outside of Erebus, which is you know, the other three over playing. Um, these are mom and dad. These guys smack. Uh, Erebus shuffles one uh, from hand, field, or graveyard from your opponent, and uh, Aether specials one from deck, which gives you access to another Aether for your opponent's turn, or just, you know, any monarch that you want. Uh, Karaz and such. You can also summon Erebus and just swing really big. Uh, that is it for the level 8 monarchs. Uh, we're playing one Karaz. This is the last uh, actual Monarch we're playing in the deck. Uh, Karaz is pretty good. He special summons and pops up to two, and then the controller of the card that was popped, of each card that was popped, draws one So for each card that they controlled that was popped. So normally you'll uh, just pop one on your opponents and one on yours and both draw one. Uh, then we're playing double Vanity's Fiend and one Majesty's Fiend. Uh, I would play triple vanities if he had a thousand defense and he was searchable. That's why I'm playing the one majesties, because he is searchable. Uh, vanities plus domain is pretty much game. Uh, it's just super oppressive. And then the last uh, monarch statted card we're playing is, um, how do I say this again? Seal Glare, the Luminous Lunar Dragon. This card's basically just a bounce. Um, that's it. Uh, if it's lower than 2400 attack, it just gets bounced and you can summon it off of Aether. Uh, for our Squires, we're playing Triple Ada. This is your main normal summon uh, starter in the deck. And then uh, Double Eidos. Uh, Eidos is summoned off of Ada and uh, lets you tribute summon again. So it just gives you any of these is any one of these uh, when you have access to a field spell. You can even go into the big monarchs. And that is it for our Squires. And now for our fake Squires, or just uh, Summons that get you into tributes. We play two proof of profless. Uh, this card's really insane. Uh, this came out in uh, Lightning Overdrive. It's a TCG exclusive. Uh, if you control no special summon monsters, you can special it from your hand, uh, but you can't special for the rest of the turn. Um, and when it's normal or special, so even if you normal summon it, you can tribute. Uh, you can immediately after it resolves tribute summon a monster. So uh, basically, proof of profless is just a free uh, tribute summon on normal or special pretty good. Then we're playing Triple and Chamafright. This is really what does it. This is what lets you uh, play the deck right now in my opinion. This card is Upstart Goblin and it's a body uh, to tribute. He's super good. Uh, he in scale pops himself and draws a card and then you can special it from the extra deck and then tribute summon using his body. It's uh, very very good. He is honestly my favorite addition to the deck recently because the deck hasn't had many changes. But uh, yeah he's uh, super cool. I like Enchamafright. Uh, his effect in English doesn't really, you know, work the way it should. Uh, it's just the wording on it is super bizarre. Uh, so the way I interpret it is that it doesn't activate in scale, but uh, we're ruling it and every ruling I've seen has just allowed it to happen. So I guess that's what it is. I guess it works that way. Uh, then we play Namesake of the deck, Triple Domain. Uh, uh, when you have no cards in your extra deck, and uh, you're the only one that controls a tribute summon monster, opponent can't special from the extra deck. Pretty good. And then if a tribute summon monster battle, uh, you control battles an opponent's monster, excuse me, attacks an opponent's monster, gains 800 attack. And then uh, once per turn, it can reduce the level of any of your level 8 monarchs in your hand, which is super nice because it lets them be one tribute summon monsters, which is just super dope. So yeah, uh, kind of got to play it in my opinion. Uh, and then we play Triple Pantheism. This card recently came to 3. Um, it's very good generic draw, uh, if you discard a Monarch spell, of course. And then it's access to any uh, spell in your deck, which is also very good. 
Uh, speaking of good spells, uh, Triple Stormforth uh, lets you tribute someone using your opponent's monsters. Can't go wrong with that. Uh, triple Tenacity, it is all of the previous cards. You reveal a card with Monarch stats, and then add a Monarch spell trap from your deck to your hand, except this card, and you can only activate one per turn. So yeah, basically it's just, it's three more copies of every other Monarch card in your deck. It's very nice. You'll play two Return, because uh, Return is kind of a brick by itself, so you don't want to play three and clog on it, uh, but at the same time, you want to draw it sometimes, but not all the time, so it play two copies. That also makes it easier to search with the Tenacity, and with the pantheism, if you really need to reveal uh, three return, you can just reveal two return and a tenacity and guaranteed get a return. So yeah. Then we're playing the one march. Uh, march is pretty good. Tribute summon monsters can't be targeted or destroyed by card effects. Uh, but you can't special from the extra deck, which doesn't really matter because, you know, we don't have an extra deck. But yeah, uh, makes your stuff untargetable and indestructible, which is pretty nice. And then the one rota for a fourth copy of uh, Ada. Uh, yeah, Searching Ada is good. Then, for the two traps, we're playing Double Prime. Um, I've seen a bunch of people playing... Uh, or, let me explain Prime first. Uh, it is basically a mini Avarice every turn by shuffling Monarch Spell Traps. Uh, you, you shuffle two and then draw a card. And then when it's in the grave, you can banish a Monarch Spell Trap and then Special Summon it uh, as a body, which is super useful because it gives you constant fodder to tribute. Uh... But honestly, people don't realize how broken its first effect is. Like, it really allows you to, like, grind, which is super, super good. Uh, if you're playing any deck that isn't, like, Drytron, you can actually just grind versus people. It's very nice. Uh, I've seen play people playing Erupt and, uh, what's the other one? The Tribute Summon one that lets you Tribute Summon on your opponent's turn. Basically, it gives all your uh, Monarchs that uh, Aether effect. I just think they're kind of bricky if you don't open... Uh, a tribute summon monster and you know a way to get there because this deck already has a problem with bricking if you open a bunch of spells that don't actually do anything and no monster or a bunch of tribute summon monsters and no spells uh, to get to many monsters it's very difficult to play the game so I just wanted to cut down on the number of bricks I'm playing and just really focus in and play you know the the bare essentials and be able to set up domain plus a monarch or a uh, tribute summon monster every single turn. Because that's really what it comes down to. You're just playing the numbers on your opponent having made out to it. It's uh, a very simple game plan, but it's quite effective whenever it happens. Uh, onwards into the extra deck. Uh, we're playing Triple Dimension Shifter. Uh, we can't really afford to play any lackluster hand drafts like Ash or Ghost uh, Bell or anything like that, where it's just kind of one for one cards. We need cards that blow out as hand traps if we're playing it, and that's what D-Shifter does. It just blows out decks if they, you know, can't play around it. And we'll play Triple Droll, because uh, Drytron is a hell of a deck, and uh, you gotta play the one blowout card versus them. This is also insanely good versus uh, Invoked. Uh, very good versus them. Uh, they can't do everything. If they open with Meltdown, it's super nice to just draw them on res. You should be like, haha, you can't search at, uh, Invo now. But you know, every Invoked player always draws Invo. Then we play Triple Lightning Storm. Uh, this is the last going second card we play on the side deck. It's just super good against back row decks. I don't really cite it in versus combo decks. I hope to draw uh, one of those six cards versus them and hope it's enough because Lightning Storm really isn't that great versus uh, combo decks. It's just better versus trap decks because uh, they're the weaker of the two. Like back row is just way weaker than monsters. They're harder to protect. They have to have like Solemn Judgment to deal with this or anti spell, but like better have it. Uh, onto the going first cards. Play triple shared ride. Uh, drawing into cards on your opponent's turn, like after you set up, uh, say you don't open Vanity's Fiend or um, Vanity's Fiend Domain, you can just end on like Domain plus something else and then just shared ride into like good cards off the top of your deck, which is just super useful. You just want to draw resources so you can play on your next turn uh, because normally they can't out the, uh, the Domain without you know going to some extreme lengths. And then we play Triple Solemn Judgment because saying no to cards that would out your domain vanities lock is uh, kind of good. Being able to just pay half and say no is the end goal of the deck. Games 2-3. Yep, uh, this deck is pretty fun. I enjoy it quite a bit. I've been playing it uh, a significant amount since uh, Proof of Birthless came out and uh, Enchantment Fright. Uh, I'm a big fan of this deck. I have it pretty much max already. The only thing I'm missing is the, uh, 
the singular, what's his damn name? The Ghost Rare uh, Mobius. That's the only Monarch card I don't have max rate of current play cards. I don't have the old ones, the good ones. That is the that is the future if I decide to just quit playing retail, is to just play GOAT and spend all my money on Monarch cards because they're very cool and Mobius is one of the best looking ultis in the game. Oh yeah, I don't have vanities either. Um, yeah, like, n kind of right now, the deck is just vanities, domain, turbo. Like, this is just pretty obnoxious to deal with, and if you're very lucky, you can end with March. Um, it's just kind of the end goal right now, is to just stun out your opponent for a turn, and then summon out uh, Aether and try to OTK. Like, the game plan is very simple right now. We know what we've been doing for... God, when did this deck come out? 2017, I think? 2016? I don't even remember. Uh, Aaron was still playing whenever this deck came out. Uh, before his six-year hiatus. Anyway, guys, this has been Patrick from Top Tier Gaming. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, Domain Monarchs are cool, and if uh, you have anything you want to say about the deck, leave it in the comments. Um, join the Discord, follow our Twitter, Top Tier YGO. Uh, Discord is in the description. Have a good day. Bye!